Last time we started a multiplication strategies cheat sheet and I want you to find that piece of paper. Remember I asked you to save it and keep it close. So can you pause the video until you have that piece of paper and a fresh new piece of paper? Okay, you should have your multiplication strategies cheat sheet in front of you. Now, if you did not do last day's lesson where we started this and we already wrote this down, then you need to stop this lesson and go back to yesterday's math number one so that you can start this uh, paper properly with us, okay? All right, so yesterday, uh, we talked about three strategies. We outlined them. The first one was repeated addition. And boys and girls, you're not writing anything yet. You're just looking at what you already wrote. The second one was skip counting. And the third one was draw a picture. And these are all to show what's happening when we multiply. Okay, underneath number three on your multiplication strategies cheat sheet, we're now going to add number four. So this is what I would like you to write down right now. Okay, don't write any of the other numbers down, just write that down. So pause the video until you have that ready. Okay, so number four says add or, that's what we kind of say when we have this here, add or subtract one group. That's our strategy and so many of you use this strategy and you're not even aware of it or you wouldn't know that that's what we call it, okay? But so many of you are already using this and I use this strategy all the time. This is one of my favorites. And as we go through these, boys and girls, you'll find one strategy that you like better than another because your brain is different than everybody else's brain. So the strategy that I like the best is the one that works best for me. The strategy that you like the best is probably the one that your brain is going to do the best with. So we're just giving you a whole bunch of strategies and then the one that your brain likes the best is the best one for you. Okay, so you've written down that front part, the beginning part, but you haven't written down these numbers. Don't. Okay, put down your pencil for a minute and let's just think about this. When we were in class, I talked to you about having anchor. Okay, you're not writing anything down right now. You're just listening. I talked to, to you about having anchor uh, numbers when you're memorizing your times tables. So let's say that we were going to do five times. Okay, so five times. Now, an anchor times table that pretty much everybody knows is five times five, 25. Okay, that's one of the very first ones that you learn and it sticks in your head. Five times five is 25. So easy to remember. And I said, if you know five times five, then you can easily figure out five times six. So what do we do when we're adding the next, or we're figuring out the next times table? If we know five groups of five is 25, then six groups of five would just be adding another five, and that would make 30. So here's how not to do this. Okay, this is how not to do this. If you already know this, this does not make sense. Oh, I'm gonna figure out, oh, Mrs. Ratsoff said, I've gotta figure out six times five, six groups of five or five times six, it's gonna be the same thing. Okay, I better start at zero. Uh, zero times five is five, one times five, or sorry, zero times five is zero, one times five is five, two times five is 10. Okay, this is taking a long time. That's why it is not the smartest way to do that. So skip counting for this one is not the smartest way because you already have a shortcut in front of you. So I would not skip count for this. I would not go use my fingers and go zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. I wouldn't do that. I would use what I already know. Five times five is 25. Add another group of five. 30. 5 times 6 or 6 times 5 is 30. Okay? Now, what about the subtracting? Well, if you can't remember 5 times 4 or 4 times 5, you know 5 times 5, so let's subtract a group. What's 25 take away 5? 20. Okay? So 
I can figure those out super easily. Now, it's even better if you use your 10. 10 times 5, 50. That's a great anchor multiplication to remember, okay? So now I don't have to start all the way from zero and skip count all the way up to 11 if I wanna know 11. If I wanna figure out 11 really fast, I go 10 times five or five times 10 is 50. If I wanna know five times 11, I need to add a group of five. And guess what that is? 55. So when you're figuring out your 11 and 12, you always go back to your anchor that you know, the easiest one to remember. And that's usually the five and the 10. Some of you might remember just for random reasons, you might have it really solid in your head that five times seven is 35. Great, then if you need to add five to figure out five times eight, you can do that, okay? Now going back to 10 times five or five times 10 is 50, let's say you are trying to figure out nine and nine are uh, always some of the last ones that we get committed to memory, but let's take away a group of five. 50, take away five, what would we get? 45, okay? All right, so we did that for five times tables. And now we're gonna try that with one that is, oh, now we're gonna try that with one that is just a little bit more difficult. Okay, so let's go back from fives and let's try a harder one. Okay, let's try, remember you're not writing this out right now, boys and girls, you're just watching. Okay, let's try eight times. That's a bit of a doozy, right? Okay. So let's say I wanted to know eight times four or four times eight. Okay, now I might already know that if I've learned my four times tables, okay? But let's say I'm having trouble remembering my four times tables, but I do remember my five times tables. Five times eight is 40, I remember that. Okay, now remember we're doing eight times tables, so we have to add and subtract groups of eight, okay? So 40, take away eight, what would we get over here? So you can take that away on your fingers, or if you're doing mental math, you can take away 10 and add two. Okay, but the answer would be 32. All right, what if I wanna know what six times eight is? Well, I know five times eight is 40, and look, this one's super easy to add, 40 plus eight, 48, okay? So when you're doing this and throwing around numbers in your head, remember, if you're trying to figure out eight times tables, you have to add and subtract groups of eight, okay? All right, everybody I think knows what eight times 10 is, 80. Okay, so let's use that to figure out a hard one, eight times nine. So what are we talking about? We're talking about eights. So let's subtract a group of eight. 80, take away eight. 72. Adding a group of eight is really easy. 88. Okay, so now get your pencil ready and now we're going to write down how we would write out this thinking. Okay, so write this down. If, so we're going to give an example here. If seven times three, so seven groups of three equals 21, then eight groups of three equals, so pause the video until you're caught up to there, okay, now we're not just going to write the answer here, we're going to write out our thinking. So we already knew that seven times three was 21, but we're adding another group of three because now we have eight groups of three. So we already knew that was 21, we add a group of three and that makes 24, okay? So this is showing our thinking that first we knew seven groups of three was 21, then we wanted to add one more group, so now we're thinking eight groups of three equals that number we already knew plus another group of three. 
So this is how we write out this thinking. Okay, now if you have that all written out, you can go on to this next part. We're going to do a subtraction one. If 7 times 3 equals 21, then now we're going to take away a group. 6 times 3 equals, and I want you to see if you can figure this out. So finish writing out that sentence. See if you can figure out what numbers to write in. Pause until you're all done that. Okay, if 7 times 3 is 21, now we're going to take away a group. 6 times 3, so we knew it was 21, but now we're going to take away a group of 3. So 21 take away 3, 18, and that 6 times 3 is 18. That's something we know to be true. Okay, so give yourself a check mark if you got that right. That was probably a little bit hard to do the first time. Okay, when you have that all written out, you can go to the next uh, page. Okay, boys and girls, I would like you to take that multiplication strategies cheat sheet paper and move it aside. And now you need your fresh piece of paper. And this is what I want you to write at the top of your fresh piece of paper. Do not write out anything underneath, just the title. Okay, pause until you have that ready. Okay, we are not going to write out this question. We're going to go through the question and then we're going to write out the answer. So put your pencil down for a minute while you think about this. Number one, Zubeda had seven bags with four marbles in each bag. Now I want you to just stop and make a picture of that in your mind. So look away from the screen for a minute and picture seven bags and then picture four marbles in each bag. Okay, hopefully you should be able to see a picture of that on the table or you should be able to see the, the all the bags, seven bags and four marbles in each bag. Okay, now you can look back at the screen. She had 28 marbles. So I already told you the answer. There's 28 marbles all together. But now it says if she added one more bag, how many marbles would she have? So now we're going to uh, write out our thinking and if you just tell me the answer, it's wrong. I don't want to see the answer because that just tells me that you have your times tables memorized or that you know how to skip count. I want you to show me this strategy. So pick up your pencil, write down number one, and we're going to write out our thinking. If seven times four equals 28, comma, then, and the question was asking, how many marbles would she have if she had one more bag? Well, the bag is the group. So instead of seven bags or seven groups, she now has eight bags or eight groups. So write that down. Okay, and I'm gonna give you a chance to see if you can write this out by yourself. So pause the video and see if you can figure out what numbers to write in there. Okay, we knew she had 28 with seven groups. Now we've added another group of four. That's how many marbles are in each bag. So we're adding four more marbles and that would make 32. And we already know that eight times four is 32. So we would know that answer is correct, but I want you to show your thinking. So if you were able to do that yourself, give yourself a check mark. If that was totally confusing to you, don't worry about it because this is our first time writing out this strategy, okay? Make sure you have that all written down properly and then you can go on to the next page. Okay, Ryan's dresser has five drawers with eight socks in each drawer. I guess he's addicted to socks. He has 40 socks. How many socks would he have if he had another drawer? So I want you to be picturing this in your mind. Okay, here's Ryan's dresser. Okay. We'll put a little knob so we can open it. 
Okay, he has five drawers. So here they are, one, two, three, four, five. Inside each drawer is eight socks. So can you picture that? He's got eight socks in each drawer. Okay, remember you're not writing down this question, we're thinking. Okay, now that we've got a picture of that, now I want you to write down number two. Can you remember the first word to write when we're showing our thinking? Okay, some of you got it. If, and he has got five drawers, that's groups, and he's got eight socks in each drawer, and I already told you he has 40 socks all together. Then, okay, were we talking about adding a drawer or taking away a drawer? We were adding a drawer, so instead of five drawers, now six drawers. It's really a lot of socks, Ryan. Okay, so we're not just going to put the answer. We're going to show our thinking. So we knew we had this many socks already. We added another group of how many socks are in the drawer. And then tell me how many socks Ryan has all together. So pause the video and see if you can write that all out and figure out your answers. Okay, he, we knew he had 40, but now we've added another group. So another group means another eight socks. And 40 plus eight is 48. And we know that six times eight is 48, so we know that that is correct, okay? And we're gonna tell Ryan's mom not to buy him any more socks. Okay, if you've got that all written out, you can go on to the next one. Okay, I don't know what is these boys in my class, socks and shoes. Okay, here we go. Atal has nine pairs of shoes, which makes 18 shoes in all. So did you see the hidden number in there? There was a number that was inferred. That means we have to think about what number is there, even though they don't say the number. So a pair of shoes is two shoes. So if he has nine pairs, that means groups of two, then he's got 18 shoes in all. If he loses one pair, so that's a group of two, how many shoes does he have left? Okay, do not write any of this down. All you're gonna write down is number three. We're gonna start with if. And I want you to write down the first times table that we know to be true. So pause the video, write out this part, and write out the first times table that we know to be true. Okay, you should have written nine groups of two shoes each equals 18. Then, now what's happening here? He's losing a pair, okay? So that means we are subtracting. So instead of nine pairs of shoes, now he has eight pairs of shoes. There's still two shoes in a pair. Okay, and I'm gonna get you to write that all out, pause the video and see if you can figure out what to write in there. Okay, we knew he had 18 shoes to start with. He lost a pair, which is two shoes, and now he has 16 shoes left. So eight times two is 16. We know that is correct. Okay, if you have that all written out, then you're good to go. If, you, it's, if it's not written out properly, erase, and please write it out properly. Okay. So for number four and number five, what I would like you to do is you will write out all of this, but then you're going to try to fill these in on your own, okay? So pause the video, write that all out, write in your answers, and then when I come back on, we're gonna see if you are correct. Okay, number four. 
if 7 times 3 equals 21, then 8 times 3 equals. So we already had 21, we knew that fact. Now we want to add another group of 3, and together we have 24. So 8 groups of 3 is 24. Give yourself a check mark if you got that right. Number five, if two times six, two groups of six equals 12, then three times six equals, we had 12, we're going to add another group of six, that makes 18 all together. Three groups of six is 18. Give yourself a check mark if you got that right. Okay, and I'd like you to um, write this all out, give your best shot at filling in the blanks, and when you have everything filled in, then you can turn the video on again. So pause for now. Okay, number six. If eight times four equals 32, then seven times four, so we're taking away a group, right? We had eight, now we have seven equals, well we know we started with 32, we're going to take away a group of 4, and that should leave us with 28. Give yourself a check mark if you got that right. Number 7, if 10 groups of 7 equals 70, then 9 groups, so we're taking away a group of 7 equals, well we started with 70, and now we're going to take away a group of 7, and that equals 63. And 9 times 7, for those of you that have your 9s memorized, 63. Or maybe you have your 7s memorized, you would know that one too. Okay? When you have that all written out properly, then you can go on to the next page. Okay, this is your homework to do on your own. Uh, you do not have to write out the question. You just have to show the answer. So you're going to write number 8. And then you're going to show repeated addition for 6 times 4 equals 24. Okay, so look back on your cheat sheet. That's what your cheat sheet's for. How do you write out repeated addition? You're going to do the same thing for number 9. You're not going to write this out. You're going to write number 9, and then you're going to show skip counting for 6 times 4 equals 24. So if you can't remember the difference between repeated addition and skip counting, look at your cheat sheet. This answer and this answer should not look the same. They should look different. Okay, and I'll, um, you can rewind to that part in a minute, but I just want to explain the last part. And number 10, you're going to write, you're not going to write that. Number 10, you're going to draw a picture for 6 times 4 equals 24. Look at your cheat sheet. And number 11, this is your last question, uh, you have to write out all of this, so this needs to be written out this time, and then you're going to fill in the blanks, okay? So I'm going to be checking your answers for 8, 9, 10, and 11 when you post them today. Okay, good job. Oh, boys and girls, just uh, go back in the video so you get down number 8 and number 9, and uh, then come to this part.